all my friends, viewers, and followers. You can see I'm on a hike uh, pretty long already. Already three hours into the hike, so I'm sweaty, it's hot. It's been really strenuous walk up here, but it's really beautiful as you can see. So today we're gonna have the first part of the reading, the introduction to the devout life by Francis de Sales. And I'm gonna, we're gonna read first and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about it or maybe I stop in between the reading. I don't, I don't know yet, but we'll see how it goes. So, let me find the page with part one. To devotion described. So, um, before we start, I just want to say this is this book is addressed to Philotia, and Philotia means, and I wrote it down, lover of God. This is see, uh, Francis of Sales is talking to everyone. So not only the priest, not only the monk, not only the person that lives, you know as a hermitage uh, somewhere away just for God, but to everyone who lives in the world. So this was a new thing actually that Francis de Sales did because most other spiritual books and spiritual teachers were teaching monks and priests and just really devout people who, ha who are just not living in the world, don't have a family, don't have to maybe have an occupation. But Francis de Sales is here talking to Philotia lover of God. He was actually talking to, writing to um, an honorable other person, but he wanted to, to make sure that this was addressed to everyone. So instead of Philotia, you could say, um, dear um, Scott, Matthew, um, David, um, Susie, wh whoever you are, and whatever your name is. So Philotia is you. You aim at true devotion, my dear Philotia, because as a Christian, you know how acceptable it is to the divine majesty. But inasmuch as trifling errors at the outset of an undertaking are wont to increase rapidly as we advance frequently, becoming almost irreparable, it is needful that first of all, you should ascertain wherein lies the virtue of devotion. For there are many counterfeits, but only one true devotion, and therefore if you do not find that which is real, you will but deceive yourself and vain, vainly pursue an idle, superstitious form. Aurelius gave to all his works of art the countenance of a woman he loved. So every one colors his devotion according to his taste and inclinations. So Aurelius was actually a portrait painter, or he drew um, portraits of people. But he only drew some of the features that he was actually drawing, but it ended up always being only the one person, his love. So <laughs> it almost always looked, whoever he, he drew or painted, as his love so that's not good see you make up in your mind how the perfect devotion is but that's not reality that might not be the, the true way one is giving to fasting and whilst he fasts he holds himself to be devout although his heart is full of bitterness and whilst he will not touch his lips with wine, nor even with water for abstinence sake. He scruples not to sully them with his neighbor's blood and slander and calumny. Another would fain be devout because he daily repeats many prayers and although at the same time he gives way to angry, proud and injurious language amongst his servants or associates. Another willingly opens his pursuit to give alms to the poor, but he cannot open his heart to forgive his enemies. Another forgives his enemies, but only force obliges him to do justice to his creditors. Such men may pass for devout, but they're not really so. When the messengers of Saul sought David, they found only an image in his bed, which, being dressed by Michal, 
in David's garments deceived them so that they imagined it to be David himself. Thus many persons clothe themselves with a garb of external devotion and the world believes them to be really devout and spiritual, whilst in truth they are mere statues or phantasms of devotion. True living devotion, my Philotea, implies the love of God. Indeed, it is itself a true love of Him in the highest form, for whereas divine love enlightens our souls as called grace and makes us pleasing in His sight. So giving us the power to do good, it is called charity. And when it reaches to the point of perfection wherein it is not only causes us to do good, but to do it earnestly, frequently, and readily, then it is called devotion. The ostrich never flies, the common fault flies, but seldom, and then heavily and near the ground. But the swallow, the dove, and the eagle are never on the wing, they fly far and easily. Even so sinners rise to God, but always grovel on the earth in pursuing earthly things. Well-meaning people, who are not yet not as truly devout, mount up to God in good works, but rarely and slowly and heavily, whilst the devout flies to him perpetually, soaring lightly. In short, devotion is spiritual agility and vivacity, by means of which charity works in us, or we in her. We love and the readiness, and as charity leads us to obey and fulfill all God's commandments, so devotion leads us to obey them with promptitude and diligence. Therefore, no one who fails to pursue all these commandments can be truly virtuous or devout, since to that end he must have charity and further through readiness and eagerness to fulfill the law of charity. And as devotion consists in perfect charity, so it is not only makes us active, ready, diligence in keeping God's commandments, but furthermore it stimulates us to the eager, loving performance of all the good works we can attain unto, even such as are not enjoyed us, but only suggested or counseled. Even as a man just recovered from an illness walks on his journey only as far as it is absolutely necessary with pain and difficulty, so the repentant sinner threats in God's way heavily and slowly until having attained the grace of devotion. He resembles the healthy and light-hearted traveler, who not only proceeds on his way, but runs and leaves with joy in the way of God's commandments, hastening into the path of his heavenly counsels and inspirations. In truth, charity and devotion differ, differ no further than flame and fire. For charity is a spiritual fire, which when it flames brightly becomes devotion. A devotion adds to the fire of charity, the flame which renders it ready and active and diligent, not only in keeping his commandments, but in carrying out his heavenly inspirations and counsels of perfection. So we want to hold here that we all have an idea of devotion and we have a love for maybe one devotion over the other. So as it is said here, for example, one person loves to fast. So Lent, which is the 40 days of Christian fasting period before Easter, would be his favorite time where he can shine. But in other ways, he might totally fail. He might not be loving or nice or kind at all, even though he thinks that through fasting only he's a devout person. Another person might pray and pray and pray, but he's still not nice. That's still not true devotion. True devotion is all of these things. You do everything for the love of God and for Him. And it's okay. If you cannot fast as somebody else does, that's okay. You might be still a, de a devout person. But again, it's a full complex thing. It's not only one thing that you choose that you might be great at, but you're supposed to grow in all the virtues. 
so and then it says also that you need the grace of God to be able to be devout so um, I think the uh, Saint uh, Cassius I think it was him who said that um, prayer and we can see that is like a feather and a wind comes and the feather the, the grace from God raises that feather up high in the sky and it flies easily. Now, when a person sins, it's like the, um, the feather is getting wet and it falls to the ground and it can't fly no more. And it takes a long time for the feather to dry again and then it only heavily lifts off and never as beautiful as maybe when it was all clean and shining and nice and the wind could just go and lift it so we need to be renewed in the graces of God we cannot just do it on our own see we might be the feather but we need that grace that wind that lifts us up to God our prayers and everything else and then we can have also perfect devotion it's not only that our works is enough we need to do it together with God and stop judging others who might have a different view of devotion. And again, we always have this picture of a saint who we think or how we think one person should be. And we can correct others such much better than ourselves. Oh, we know the faults of others and we know exactly how to correct it and to tell them how to. But instead, Let's look at ourselves. Let's judge ourselves. Look at our lives and see what are my failures? Where do I need to grow? Which virtue and where in devotion? And don't concentrate only on one thing. You might strive in one thing. You might be able to pray for hours or fast really well or, you know, um, look devout. <laughs> but that might not be full devotion. It just might be an outward thing. And other people might see, wow, that looks devout. But be careful. You know, Jesus said they're wolves in sheep clothes. So they might look devout, but they're not. So I hope you enjoyed the first reading of the book, Philothea by Francis de Sales. And I hope you join me in for the next episode. God bless you. See you again next time.